Context is everything to archaeology. The artifacts themselves are important, but the exact position that they came out of the ground in or that they came off the surface in, the three-dimensional position of all the artifacts in three-dimensional space is what we're really after to reconstruct the formation of the site, the contents of the site, the age of the site, the history of the place, and the archaeology of the place. And we're digging down through the ground in what we call unit levels. There's a trench or a square unit that we mark off. And within that unit, there are the levels that we record as we go down. Generally speaking, in archaeological sites, not particularly this one, but in many archaeological sites, the youngest things are closer to the surface, the things that were deposited last, and successively older things are deposited as you go down through the, through the layers into the ground. And by digging in arbitrary unit levels that are about four to eight inches thick in all of our units, we're able to sort of see if the stratigraphy, if the layers and the ages are intact or if they've been disturbed. So we get an idea of how preserved the site is. That's basically what we do. right at the edge of the road because then you can start to see the pattern of what's happening and, uh, so that you know to, to construct the argument I think. Uh, better better show that and support it it's just how much can we do we've got the machines you're, you're are you here all day today i can be here all day so however long you want me here thank you Thank you. But then you also have a bunch of other artifacts right out in here. It'd be in the general area of where you've got a number of your artifacts. So yeah, why don't we put it somewhere right in here? That should uh, work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's pretty hard to get in. We're putting a crack up. Take it away from the pin flag. No. Nope. Hmm. That it? Well, let me see. Yeah. Are we too close to that screen? Yeah, there. No. Could it be this? It's this. Yeah, that's it. It's modern. I don't know what it is. It's a ticket. Ticket 60 something.
we're saving these uh, Missouri ironweed as part of the, the scope of work that we do here uh, to save some of these prairie plants as we do our archaeological work. Things that Texas Parks and Wildlife is going to uh, replant back out here, as I understand it, and and uh, so they're going to restore. They're they're in the process of restoring some of this prairie landscape out here. And so these are the native plants that were here in 1836. Right. Well, I'm learning today that this is seaside goldenrod, and it was some of the native plants that all the men were probably wading through waist high during their action against the Mexicans. And of course, I like to visualize Third Sergeant Henry Reed, my ancestor, hiding behind some of this and taking a couple of pot shots at uh, the Mexican army. Battlefield itself, there are pieces of the land here who, that have really been undisturbed, or at least uh, not relatively undisturbed, so that uh, some of the original uh, vegetation, some of the native plants are, are still here. And this is uh, really rare. I mean, there's very few places uh, left in uh, southeast Texas that haven't either been plowed for farming or built upon for homes. Uh, or, or paved over, uh, and, and because of that, uh, the, the plants that used to basically cover the entire all of southeast Texas are, are actually becoming really rare now. Mostly, what you find are weedy species that can come in uh, after an area has been disturbed and abandoned or, or uh, whatever. Uh, but because of the battlefield, you know, is 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 a, is a battlefield that hasn't been. For the most part, it hasn't been disturbed, so the vegetation there is all native, or much of it is native to, to uh, what's always lived here in, in southeast Texas. This area here has definitely been disturbed, but, but not so much that all of the uh, original vegetation has been uh, eradicated. There's a few clumps here and there. These habitats contribute to a healthy ecosystem in two ways. By reducing the heat island effect and by sequestering carbon in the biomass. Research shows that native habitats are a significant factor in reducing environmental toxins. Restoring these ecosystems can have immediate effects on the ability to reduce greenhouse gases significantly. Invasive plant species constitute a serious threat to native habitats by destroying the forest canopy, understory, ground cover, and wetlands. This project is providing an innovative means of controlling invasives by using a combination of their removal as well as restoration of native flora, emphasizing reseeding and replacement of native species. There are obviously a lot of invasives here. Uh, predominantly invasives. But there are a couple, two or three good uh, native grasses over here. Most of the shrubs are, and the trees are probably here to some extent. And so you think this is worth salvaging a lot of the I, natives I, I here? Would, yeah, yeah it would be nice if they could restore the prairie like it was. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate your coming out today. No problem.